I have a, a I have a Yeti Snowball, but it, it can't. It turns on, but it doesn't show as a device, so I think it's pooched. Mine's a Yeti Blue. Mm. And yet it's not blue. Hmm. Hmm. It just causes those feelings. <laughs> Hello, cousin. Hi. Hello, cousin. Hi, cousin. Hi, cousin. Hi, cousin. Hello, cousin. Hey, oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Tyne, are you having a snack? I'm having a snack. Uh, snacks are important. They are. Yeah. I'm taking selfies. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It's got like this really booby outfit on though. It's a bit much. All about that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of booby outfits, um, Tyne, what's going on with your wedding dress? <laughs> okay, should we start that saga? Do you guys want that story? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit, let's start with this. Like, um, you know, in Schitt's Creek, when David's planning his wedding and he has all these grand ideas and then like nothing comes together and, and then spoiler alert, in the end, it all comes together. Yeah, yeah. surprisingly <laughs> how that happens on TV. On TV. Um, I kind of feel like I'm living that right now. So my dress is stuck at the border, as we know, because I ordered it to the border because it was cheaper and that's what we do in Thunder Bay, right? Yeah, that's a quick <laughs> drive quick quick nice little drive and like honest to goodness I'm a little bit more upset about the um tank tops that I had ordered that are also stuck at the border <laughs> um because right. I'd ordered from Disney and Disney doesn't really ship nicely to Canada so way cheaper to ship it to the border yada 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 so my dress is stuck there and uh so I hopped on the old Poshmark in search of a backup because at this point I don't think the border is going to be open and when it does you know Ryan's is going to be busy busy and we're running out of time right. so I hop on the Poshmark and I send Carrie 400 million pictures of dresses <laughs> yes <laughs> and um narrow it down with some friends to a couple options so one of them I messaged the girl and I was like yo what are the measurements of this dress she sends them back to me, which is great. It's super cute. It's like, you know, basic little wedding dress. And she drops the price for me and offers me $9.99 shipping. I'm like, cool. So it's like, you know, a pretty decent wedding dress for $56. Done. Right? Wow. Which is cheaper, cheaper than, than the dress that dress. I ordered. It's cheaper than the dress that I had ordered, which is not like for everybody listening. Uh, <laughs> my dress that I ordered is not a typical dress. I just said I ordered it from Disney. So, you know, we're going a little non-traditional, but the dress I found on Poshmark was pretty traditional and I was like gonna be happy with it. It is what it is, right? If I have to wear a traditional wedding dress, then I will. <laughs> if I have to do the things, I'll do the things for the people. Um, so, <laughs> wake up the next morning and the seller canceled it and I was like what the heck why did you cancel it and it says damage and with Poshmark for those of you that not, have not used Poshmark um you can't direct message someone you can only like publicly comment so oh I said to my friend I was like I hate to be you know the Karen here but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna you know, say what's the damage? Because if it's something that we can hobble gobble together, like if it's got a little dirt or like, you know, we can make it happen as long as it's not the zipper in the back. Cause I don't want to deal with that. You know, I don't think Aunt Carol situation. wants to deal with zippers either. But... I don't think so. Or Sue or like, you know, any of the people yeah. like no one ever enjoys dealing with a zipper. So I, I pulled a Karen and I just, I wrote a comment back on the post and I said, you know, just curious to know what the damage is blah 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 and she hadn't gotten back to me right away and I'm in full-on like panic mode now right so I have all these other dresses saved so I pick one and it's the cheapest one and I'm like you know what just in case we'll order that and uh you know 24 hours goes by and there's no comment back okay whatever gonna let this go time to release this dress in addition to my original dress like having my David moment and walking away releasing all of the dresses releasing all of the dresses just gonna go naked you're welcome okay. and uh 
<laughs> Whatever. So here we are now, and she responds to me, and she says, it's not really damaged. It's just really wrinkly. <laughs> I'll post a picture and let you decide if you still want it. <laughs> Again, for those of you who have not ordered from Poshmark, it's not coming from this city. So she's going to have to put this dress in a box or a Ziploc bag or whatever and like mail it on its way here. So yeah, of course it's going to be wrinkly. Fold it like a fitted sheet in a giant ball <laughs> and shove it in a bag and away we go. Exactly. <laughs> Hello. S- some a- some aunt got to have a Someone's Oh, I have, I have bed, one. You know. We have it says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There it's not go. like a full on one. It's like an iron with like a steaming option. But like, yeah, the people have the steamers here, right? And I had ordered, I wasn't going to order a veil. But when I was wearing my non traditional dress, I was like, probably should wear a veil, make it a little more bridal, right? Mm-hmm. So when I got the veil, I also got that on Poshmark. I, the seller included a really cute little like note and whatever. It said, well wishes. And, you know, by the way, if you just steam this, it'll be fine. It's going to be wrinkly from the mail. So, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I rebought the uh, the dress, and now I have another dress coming. So we have two dresses on the way. <laughs> These are the well, days of my life. Well, one for the ceremony and one for the after for the yes. after party. So if anybody's looking for go. dresses after August twenty second, there'll be more put up on Poshmark. <laughs> well, let me know if you want. To I'm hoping for. <laughs> I'm I'm expecting this, you know, the because you're going to broadcast your ceremony, yes. right? So I'm hoping that it's going to be like a Reba McIntyre concert and you're going to like do like quick wardrobe changes <laughs> mid performance. We, we can make that happen. Like a curtain will come up and all of a sudden it'll drop and then bang, you'll just be there with your next outfit. And I love that it's a Reba concert, like... Yeah. Well, that's I went to a Reba concert. It was the first comfort, concert I ever went to, and it that blew my mind how she changed her costumes like I, like a hundred times during that concert, and in a matter of seconds. I'm sure it was all tear away and like Velcro, but from my nosebleed seats, it was very <laughs> impressive. She might as well have been Madonna. She well, I was gonna say I'd expect that from Madonna or something, but like, what wouldn't expect that from Reba to be honest. <laughs> My favorite part of that concert when was when she sang uh, "Fancy" and the the from the jury box from the video, and it was like lifted up over the audience and then up into the rafters, Whoa. like she was you know singing the opera. while floating around the <laughs> yeah basically, but not yes but no. It was a fantastic no concert. Doubt. Every concert, ex- you know. I expected that level of showmanship. She set the bar real high. Her and Jan Jan Arden. Jan Arden is another person I love to see in concert because she sounds exactly yes. how she sounds on her records. Yes. So Tom Jones also. I've never gone to Tom Jones. Oh, don't start me on Tom Jones. Here's my rant of the day. You guys ready for this one? Yeah. <laughs> when I was like, I'm going to say five. F- f- no, I was like 13 or 14. I was an, an early teen. I love Tom Jones. I've always loved Tom Jones. He's like one of my go-to people. Secrets. You're welcome. For those of you that don't know that about me. <laughs> Secret reveal. <laughs> Heard it first here. Um... So Tom Jones came to the auditorium, and if you know anything about the Thunder Bay Auditorium, is that the tickets here are always sky high because it's the auditorium. And I wanted nothing more that year than to go see Tom Jones. He was coming. I knew he was coming. I thought you were going to say to throw your granny pants. <laughs> Literally that as well. That. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I kind of like begged with my mom a little bit, and she was the one that, she was a Tom Jones tease. She was the one that told me that he was coming. 
And like they like the money wasn't there, right? Like it just wasn't gonna happen. Couldn't go, whatever. And uh, my mom, being my mom, was you know, oh, you'll have lots of time to see him. Blah blah blah. Because he's getting younger all the time, right? I have to look it up. I don't remember when he died, but um, he passed away. You know, a couple of years later or whatever. And I never did get to see him. And <laughs> Up until my mom's death, we joked about it all the time. I was like, you know, <laughs> you told me about Tom Jones coming and I never got to go and now he's dead. Now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> well, I did see him in concert. Yes, you at did. At Centennial Concert Hall, downtown Winnipeg, <laughs> with some ladies from work who were of a different generation because I was approximately five minutes old when I went and it was everything you hoped and dreamed it would be yeah including the, including the undies of course which me while I go cry into a corner now. <laughs> grab your pillow cry into the pillow and I was unfamiliar like I knew Tom Jones I knew you know it's not that, unusual it's not unusual to um love. I hate to I hate to break it to you guys, but I am pretty sure he's not dead. No, he died. I'm relatively certain he died in like 2016 or something. Okay, where's the Google? That I'm looking at the I'm looking at Google, and it's saying he's 80 years old. Did he die when he was 80? <laughs> Are we having a Nelson Mandela no. effect happening? He is not dead. You're correct. I thought I he don't was know. dead. Oh my gosh! Okay, did he stop caring? Is there still hope? <laughs> There's still hope. You just declared him dead. What's you pussy cat? I have to disclaimer. I swear that he died, huh? No, maybe he just stopped touring. He maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Although in 2020 he did a a, a sing along on The Voice. Well, what the heck? so he experienced a resurgence in notability in the 2010s due to his coaching role on the television talent show The Voice UK. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. I, I just made that up. I didn't read it. <laughs> maybe that was, just, maybe that was just maybe. your mom. Like, like, get over it. Like, like, help yeah. you let, let go of the Kill dream. The dream. <laughs> the dream is. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising <laughs> anyway. Yes. There's, There's still hope. hope. I have so much hope. Now. <laughs> if the Rolling Stones are still touring, maybe. 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 Resurgence maybe. of hope. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I really like secretly what? wanted him to be dead so that Dean's wrong. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I wanted you to be wrong. I'm sorry. But I'm so glad that you're right. <laughs> Me too. I'm like you've just brought so much hope to my day. <laughs> Tom, if you're listening, I I'm looking for a wedding singer. Yes. Which I totally don't think he is, but, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I would like for me to be wrong there. I'm really I happy that I was wrong, so I'm sorry I declared him dead and he's not. He's alive. <laughs> He'll always be alive in our hearts. <laughs> he just turned 80 on the 4th. He did, like, okay, <laughs> in 2018 he embarked, okay, listen to this. You really missed the window. In 2018, he embarked on a live what summer tour and was planned, <laughs> which was planned to run from May 1st to August 11th. In, in July, however, many shows were canceled. Because he died. Due to sickness and bad weather. <laughs> because he died in the other timeline. No, he's not dead. In the timeline I was Only living in. your universe. <laughs> he <Yeah>. was dead. Because <laughs> you were living in the Berenstein Bears timeline. I was. The Mandela Effect. It's real. Have you heard of this, Deets? Um, Parallel Universe? It sounds vague, vaguely familiar. I believe we might have talked about this at some point, but... Like, do you not remember when... Well, Nelson Mandela... Like, when Nelson Mandela died in prison, right? Like, do you remember when that happened? He No, because he didn't. <laughs> he didn't die in prison. I knew that he didn't. Yes. But I've heard about... 
stuff like that people hearing it and thinking it's true and then spreading yes. it um but also like there's a whole list of them and i'll maybe i'll link to this article but like i know it as the berenstein bears it's the berenstein bears not bernstein yeah, yeah. oh stein. It, it's stein, stein versus bears? stain like i know it as b-e-r-e-n-s-t-e-i-n but it's actually b-e-r-e-n-s-t-a-i-n all I know is I that know. Papa Bear is an awful lot like my father-in-law. Okay, I'm just gonna put that out there. Yes. And every time I read those books with Ella, she is literally peeing her pants laughing. Because she it's thinks Bubba. it's like- <laughs> <laughs> Have you made a music list for your wedding? Um, we haven't because we were supposed to meet with our DJ, etc. Um, and now we have to wait until next year for that. So. I've got Wyatt's iPod. Well, I have a plan. I, um, you heard it here first, and I can't reveal all of the details because Evan is unaware of some of the details. Unaware, so, if you will. Spoiler alert, I'm pranking Evan at some point. Spoiler <laughs> alert, I know when. Yeah, and how hard. <laughs> and soon it might be involved, oh, yes. may or may not be involved. That's really what I should do, is get your kids to play. <laughs> Anybody have a quick 80 grand around? <laughs> Wait, what? Why do you need bassoons 80 grand? Expensive. They're expensive. Oh, bassoons. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not musically, really musically inclined. So I like I played a clarinet, but I couldn't play a clarinet to save my life now. That was another That's thing we have in common. Yes. Yeah. Did you play a clarinet too, No, time? but I definitely have like played other people's wind instruments, which sounds super dirty, but... <laughs> Um, no, I was always, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm an orchestra kid through and through string instruments are like my jam and like maybe the piano a little bit, but like, I have a terrible reason why I quit music and it's horrible, but like we had this little tiny, this little tiny woman was the music teacher and I was scared that I was going to get picked on because when everyone else was being super bad, she would come and stand right in front of me and talk directly to me. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not a teacher's pet. I don't want to get beaten. Oh, no up way. <laughs> Shoot. So, but on the plus side, when I quit band, which made me really sad to quit band, I took keyboarding, which led me to computers. So, so here we are. This made me the computer game junkie I am today. I spent uh, the majority of, well, a good chunk of my life, but also the majority of my high school career in orchestra. Um, I, uh, as well. Playing the bassoon. Yeah. <laughs> playing the violin. When I wanted to play the bass, and I wasn't allowed to play the bass because I played the violin. <laughs> well, you, the problem is, is when you play an instrument well, you kind of get typecasted. Huge. Which is exactly yeah. what did not happen to me. Yes, it's true. You can play the clarinet. That means you can play the bassoon. Okay. Okay. Which is also why I dropped like grade 13 economics to take a grade 10 orchestra class so I could learn to play cello. Yes. That happened. That did happen. I remember that. I remember you playing uh, cello in Portage La Prairie. So one day I was at one of the two malls and I heard an orchestra. Yeah, it wasn't at the regular mall. It was a different spot. Unless I make, It was at the uh, hotel. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. By the Coke can? No. Oh, yes, I know where you mean. Yes, I so, totally know where you mean. I was uh, wandering around Plap and came across an orchestra, and I went, what the heck? I could hear it down the hallway. So I shimmied up to the door and took a peek, and it was a children's orchestra. So I joined it as a large child. And actually... <laughs> Me playing with the YSO for years, yeah. There goes Carrie, <laughs> just pushing her yep. way in. And there was another lady who I think, I'm not great with like age determinations, but pretty sure she was quite a bit older than I was at the time. And so the two of us played cello and it was so fun. And the rental was $15. So like, how could you go wrong? What? How can you I not? Know. I know. So we had this amazing instructor from the Brandon University. And yeah, we even had a gig at an old folks home. Sweet. 
I love the sound of a cello. Mm-hmm. It's just so like, it's like it resonates inside you when you, mm-hmm. when you hear it. I agree. I don't know. I appreciate it. I cannot play it. Not yet. I've been thinking about. Stay uh, tuned. Again. Yeah. Stay tuned. You should. <laughs> I know. I really should. Mainly so I can also steal it and play it. Cause I always wanted to learn. And I, that's the thing is I am a treble clef instrument and I always wanted to learn the bass clef and I got left out because I knew how to play violin. <laughs> Zachariah teach you. He played upright bass last year in band. Yes, he did. Once in a while. Periodically. I just want to clarify for anyone listening at the moment that Carrie is barraging me with um, these links to yes. <laughs> all of these bassoons that are for sale on Kijiji. Yeah, but they're all in Toronto. We can get Evan to pick that one up. Yeah, yeah well, we just gave Evan to pick it up. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I should change my search region to something a bit more current location-ish. Maybe. <laughs> you might find something cheaper. So to recap, we're glad Tom Jones didn't die. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Can we just go back to the wedding singer for a minute and talk about the wedding singer at Cousin's wedding? Because that was unbelievable and so much fun. Oh my gosh, totally. <laughs> oh, Elton. that was our friend yes. Kelly. He is a quite accomplished uh, Elton John impersonator from Portage the Prairie. My favorite was when he came to visit at my mom's and put on a concert in her dining room. Your mom is so right? spoiled. She really is. I do, I actually had forgotten I about it, that. I can still see it in my mind's eye. Yes. Were you yes. there? You were there too, no? Was I? Come on. No, I don't think I was. Who would know? Pretty sure I wasn't. Why would I be there without you? I don't know. There's a dog barking in the background. Yeah. Can you hear her? Why is she so angry? Because she, she's not allowed outside while yard work is um, going on, and she doesn't agree with I, that. I don't blame her. This is what she's saying. I can help! I can help! Let me help. I can, can help. help. I can help. I can help. <laughs> Squirrel. <I'm helpful>. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we were we were we were lucky enough to have a, a, an iconic um, performer mm-hmm. at our wedding. That was nice. And uh, I had made a playlist, but we didn't play it. I don't know where my, the iPod was, but it was it was such a chill, relaxed wedding that I don't think it even mattered. They like didn't it didn't matter it, no. at all. Not at all. I'm not sure what time you guys left, but we had later. I think you guys stayed a bit later, and we had like yeah. a sing along and a bonfire, yeah, so and fun. it was a good time. I I still have people telling me that it was like one of the best weddings they'd ever. It's attended. true. I'm so happy I came. Oh, I'm glad you could make it. It was a little bit stressful, or like almost a bit fly by night. And thank goodness for my mother insisting on a, on some things because I and I isn't this horrible? But I would have been fine with going to the courthouse. But a wise person sat me down and told me that the wedding was for my mother. So. <laughs> So we made it so. So it was good. This summer we'll have been married for nine years. Yeah. Yep. And time flies. Like it doesn't even feel like it was that it really long doesn't. ago. Carrie, I don't remember what year you were married. You must be almost. Well, it's been about 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> I was about four and a half years old. <laughs> and now I'm five. <laughs> you were the same age that Wyatt is, I think. Weren't you 13? Seventeen years this August. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would be really fun to do a sweet sixteen. But the other truth is I don't I'm not a I'm not a lover of sweets, I'm a lover of salt. So maybe there should be a salty seventeen party. Uh, feelings. Uh, yeah. Feelings. Still processing that Tom Jones is alive over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you? How do you guys like? 
do you guys celebrate every anniversary Heck no. or like I'm too proud like we haven't really made a big deal about any of our anniversaries no. neither have we no and you probably have the most out of all of us yeah I it's don't really know close why to I my don't. birthday so I like I like to celebrate it because it's close to my birthday right <laughs> that's why I got married on my birthday just made exactly it, it did so this one year I was turning the big 4-0 I said to Rick I said, you know, the kid's teacher at school, she got a Mustang convertible for her 40th. And we happened to be lifting some really heavy boxes that day. And it reminded me that he got me my house for my birthday. He did. <laughs> um, so he's like, um, we moved. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're good. In 30 seconds or less, I came to visit and we packed your house up. Yes, while I was dealing with a mild case of pancreatitis <laughs> sent evan and our friend off to explore the museums yes. so we could hustle get get them out of yeah. your hair yeah. if they're listening no no <laughs> but, heck no but yes <laughs> i love that would be fun to have them recount their adventures together yes that was an awful year Holy rough crap. time rough yeah. time i had an ulcer evan's mom was really sick you were really sick all at the same time makes us kind of appreciate times like now when we're yes all in fairly yeah. good yes. health life goes on weddings yeah. go on despite covid yeah. despite you know despite the not so perfect times that are happen mm -hmm. in our lives that are you know whether it's health or just circumstances truth truth today's <laughs> truth and <to end> tom jones <laughs> <laughs> I went out yesterday and our, it's such a deceptive thing because our house is so cold. And then I, so I was wearing a sweatshirt and I went to shoppers and when I, I came out, I was like, I'm going to die. It is legit a sauna outside. Yeah, I know. And I'm the yes. worst person for heat. So like, I was like, what am I doing? I was just like trying to kill I'm myself. surprised you didn't shed it or rip the shoulder, like the arms out and have like <laughs> I'm sick. I'm surprised I didn't just honestly, poop my pants. Like, 38. It was so hot. It was like 38 with the humidity. Yep. Yep. You know, when you get into a bathtub that's too hot and then all of a sudden your stomach's like, Ugh. yeah. No, yes. but yes. No, you don't know that feeling. I don't I know probably. That. <laughs> you know, I remember, you know, in our 20s, we would drive to Thunder Bay and Carrie would have the heat on so high. But with the window the open? Nope, the window <laughs> not open. Her seat cranked back, and I was like, I swear she's asleep behind her sunglasses. Like I'm like, I was sitting in the passenger seat thinking I'm about to like go into a heat coma. Like how on earth could she possibly be alert and awake? <laughs> it drives my people crazy, but it's effective for me. I like being warm. Even Your tiny now, people like it well especially helpful when they're really little because it's often would put them into a bit of a lull a little sleep mm -hmm. yeah it's better than uh better than giving them gravel but i yes. think in canada yes because that, there was that one time zach woke up and said i can't feel my arms that was the last <laughs> time i gave him gravel and then oh time, <laughs> um, <laughs> i know right i'm just like just kidding. The absolute worst travel story, though, was, would probably be the time Sean and I went to Thunder Bay with Ella, and I thought, ah, oh, it's going to be so awesome. Sean and I have, like, eight hours together. We're going to chat. It's going to be great. And um, Ella, so I thought, oh, I'll just give Ella a little something, something to, to store under just a little bit. And there's an asterisk on the box that says, may cause excitability in some children. And she was more or less <laughs> bouncing around. That, like, that um, child. Yes. That child. Yeah. So Sean had her <laughs> iPad, I think. And Ella was taking selfies for a solid eight hours while asking, oh. are we there yet? Are we there yet? Like, did not <laughs> sleep that entire time. And she was oh. four. Like, four-year-olds should have a sleep in a car on an eight-hour trip. Right? I think I okay. always did, but I, I don't know. I do. If I'm not driving, I'm sleeping.
that trip between Winnipeg and Two Thunder Bay was like a horrible habit forming for me for like cars. It took me years to break myself of the habit of like sitting down in the passenger seat and completely losing consciousness within like five minutes. And sometimes it yes. still happens, but it's only when I'm super, super tired. But I think I've gotten better with it only because when Evan was living in Sault Ste. Marie, I would try to be more alert because often we were driving home in the winter, so I had to be awake. I, I'm always scared that it'll be me behind the wheel and then I'll just like KO and... Good night, yeah. Yeah. Some people are uncomfortable with silence, but I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Truth. bother me in the least. We had a friend that came over for supper last night and they were talking about like, like by they, I mean, Carolyn and our, our guests were talking about maybe we could have a little dinner music. So uh, our friend said classic. Tom Jones. <laughs> well, as soon as she said classic, I was like, I have just the thing. And then I was like, Alexa, play classical music. And then both of them looked at me like, what have you done? Because they meant classic rock or what? Yes, exactly. Yes. And it, so, <laughs> I know you're so well. <laughs> it lasted. I'll give them credit though. It lasted for like most of supper, and then afterwards they were like, "Alexa, stop." <laughs> I'm sure there were some explicit language. What the where is this? No, no, not at all. They they, they took it really well. And sometimes I'm okay. I'm kind of a I'm kind of trouble, right? I kind of like do stuff just to see what people's reactions are going to be which was totally why I said classical music but like I didn't get a lot of pushback just kind of like a side look of huh you know yeah. <laughs> this morning uh, this morning Carolyn put the music on again and she was like play classic rock and like really emphasized the rock, rock. part so uh -huh. yeah <laughs> spelled r-a-w-k yes yeah you know what's great though is that like it's funny that you guys are talking about bassoons and cellos and stuff like that because I was thinking this morning I'm like I really need to get back to listening to more classical music and just music in general because I kind of found I I haven't really been listening to music. No I know it's kind of funny hey like I go in spurts with music as well and I'm pretty sure the three of us have similar wide range of interests in our music like yeah i could be listening to acdc i could also be listening to a yo-yo ma cello concerto and yeah <laughs> and yeah <Like> mixed, <laughs> mixed with some ll cool j like it's all over the place yes exactly yes when i was growing up quick story my older cousin sherry would like always be listening to different music she we go we go out to camp and she would be like well this is what i'm listening to this week this is really popular you should listen to this so we'd listen to her music and it would be first it would be like beatles and stuff like that and then it would be something else and something else i think it really influenced how i appreciated music because i just started collecting everything like all different genres there's, I, I mean, like I, I brought up Reba in the beginning. I'm, I'm not like a really big country music fan, but there were times in my life where, yeah, I enjoy country music too. You know, like so. I don't know. I think, I think that it's good to have an appreciation for all sorts of different types of music. Although I'm gonna straight up say that I like old school rap, and I really don't like mumble rap and like the newer rap where you know it's yeah. just the rappers repeat the last word the same word over and over at the end of each sentence like i want a little bit sentence, of artistry sentence, sentence. yeah exactly it's just like repetitive word right. repetition yeah a little mm -hmm. more artistry i like that i love how there's like 90 different things going on on the side while we're still talking always we because we don't ever this is like the beauty and the magic of having conversation with you guys and a lot of my friends are like this too where we start at one place and it's like you keep clicking on the wikipedia links in your head and you've got like three thousand tabs open <laughs> yes and you've gone down like all the rabbit holes and you're having conversations on every platform available to you. Yes. And suddenly Tom Jones is coming to your wedding. So, suddenly Tom Jones Somehow. is alive. <laughs> Somehow.
despite us, he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. We've jumped over to the, the timeline where Tom Jones lives. So good for us. 2020 is looking up. <laughs> good for him. Like 2020 is really looking up for that guy. All right. Well, we better wrap it up. I have no sense of time. I don't either. Which is why I'm always late for stuff. Same. Or really early. There it is, guys. Time. Time. Tom, Tom, Tom Jones and what was the other one? Truths. Truths. A quick thank you to the Dinsbury String Quartet for the cover clip of It's Not Unusual by Tom Jones. Can't pick up your mic to join us on air? Pick up your keyboard and write us a blog. Visit hellocousin.org for all the details.